Okay, you guys, it is time to make some charcuterie boards. So the holidays are right around the corner and I really wanted to make a pyrography project that would be good for people to give away as gifts. And it doesn't have to be for the holidays. You know, you could do this for Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthday, whatever. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, take some wood that I got from KJP Select Hardwoods. They gifted me a big bundle of wood and in the, that bundle was a beautiful slab of walnut. So we're gonna cut that and turn it into a charcuterie board. We're gonna add a little bit of wood burning for customization, so let's get right to it. Okay, so before we get into the steps, let's look at all the supplies I'm gonna be using in this video. And I put all the supply details and links below in the description. Okay, so let's take a look at these slabs of wood. We've got two beautiful pieces of wood here from KJP Select Hardwoods. The first thing I'm gonna do is bring them over to the miter and just cut them in half. I measured a mark, cut them in half, and then I'm gonna use my template. I printed my template out and I cut out a sort of mock handle on a sheet of cardboard to give myself something to trace. And this is just gonna give me some lines to follow when I'm using the jigsaw to make my cuts. Once I get all the pieces cut in half, I'm gonna bring this back over to the sawhorse table, clamp them down so they're nice and sturdy, and then I'm gonna start making the cut with my jigsaw. Um, I'm using these heavy duty Diablo blades in the jigsaw, I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. I'll put like a little um, piece of text caption down here and I'll, you know, put it in the description so you can know exactly what blade I'm using. Now I prefer the jigsaw. I like to be able to handle it and make the cuts with my hands like this. I'm not a real big fan of the scroll saw, but a lot of people use the scroll saw to make, um, you know, cuts like this, this sort of shaped cuts. I have a scroll saw but I, I don't feel like it's heavy duty enough for this type of wood. So I'm opting for the jigsaw here, but you know, a scroll saw is another good option. So as I'm making my cuts with the jigsaw, I'm just being very careful to try to follow those lines as best I can. It's not perfect, it's not gonna be exact, but that's okay because it's gonna match that sort of live edge board that we've got going. That's the good thing about using the jigsaw here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have like superbly straight, precise lines or anything like that. And then when I sand it, it's going to add a little bit more of a live edge feel. And I'm just going slow and sort of making intentional turns and all of that good stuff. Trying to be careful. I got my goggles on and I'm just going around through each board and making my cuts. Okay, now that I've got all the boards cut, I'm gonna start sanding. So I'm gonna work it over pretty good with the sander. I'm starting with the 120 grit. That's gonna help me get some nice smooth edges and knock these corners down and round off all of the uh, you know flat surfaces. And I'm going to be able to remove some of these burn marks from the jigsaw and just kind of get down in the corners and some of these edges here. And if you're having a hard time getting down into some of these curved areas, um, a Dremel is a good alternative. You can kind of get down into some of those hard to reach places using a Dremel. So I'm just giving it a really good once over with the sander. And once I'm done with my 120 sand, I spritz it with a little bit of water all over on the sides, on the top, on the bottom. And what this does is makes these little sort of fine little wood hairs kind of rise up out of the wood. You can kind of see close up here, these little fine little bits that are rising up out of the wood. Once it's dry, I'm going to switch to my 220 grit and start sanding it with my 220. This is going to give it an ultra smooth finish and I'm going to hit all the corners, all of the sides, all around the handle, everywhere again. And I'm going to sand it and sand it and sand it until it has a nice smooth finish. Even those live edges, even though the live edges, um, I want them to kind of have this sort of live edge wood 
shape. I don't want there to be any splintering or any bits sticking up. So I'm really sanding those down as well whilst trying to keep the shape. So there's a little bit of a balancing act going on there. I want to get up rid of the rough spots, but I want to keep the nice live edge shape. Okay, I have sanded and sanded and sanded these, and you can see here they have a beautifully smooth surface. All of my edges are nice and rounded off. All of the corners are rounded off. So now we're gonna move on to the customization part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a template. I measure out my board, create a Photoshop file to match the size of the board so that I can get the scale just right. I downloaded some icons from Creative Fabrica and I got some fonts from Creative Fabrica and I just kind of laid out a very simple design here using an olive, a cheese, and a meat icon and then I put the words the carvers onto the board. Now um, our last name is Carver so that just happens to be a coincidence that this is a, a board that can be used for carving. Um, <laughs> that wasn't an intentional pun that was just that's our last name so just kind of a coincidence there but I got everything laid out in Photoshop printed it out now I'm going to tape my template to the board and I'm using just a plain old sheet of carbon here and I'm putting it under there tracing out my artwork once the artwork is done I'm going to bring that up and then I'm going to start burning the design into the wood using my cold wood super pro wood burning kit i'm using a combination of my straight edge here and a fine point tip to kind of reach some of those hard to reach areas so all i'm doing now is just following along the artwork burning in the design and trying to keep it as neat and clean as possible you see a lot of that this oil this moisture coming out of the walnut hardwoods tend to be more oily and have a little bit more moisture in them so as you're burning them you're going to see this sort of oil excess come out when you apply the finish at the end you won't see that anymore it'll kind of blend in with the oil finish that we're going to add okay done burning it was really simple it only took about 10 minutes to burn this design in it's it's super easy super simple to burn in and it gives us nice customization and of course you can burn whatever you want into these if you want to get real complex and complicated with it you can um, creative fabrica is a great place for templates a source like this they have a ton of stuff you can get pre-made or if you want to get some fonts and you know kind of make your own template you can do that too now that we're done burning i'm going to move on to the finishing stage and we're going to start applying some oils Okay, so we're all done with the burning. I'm gonna move on to the finishing stage. I've got my uh, finishing station set up with my uh, painter's pyramids and I've got my cutting board oil. And I like to use just one of these little like brush sponge things. I feel like it goes on a little bit easier. It soaks up the oil a little bit better. And so I just apply a really, you know, liberal layer on that first coat and you can see these oils just bring out the grains of these woods so beautifully and it just really makes everything pop and it makes that walnut just stand out so I'm gonna apply a generous layer let it sit for about 20 or 30 minutes then I'm gonna wipe off the excess and then I'm gonna let it dry for a few hours and then apply a second layer and I'm gonna go through that process again you know let that second layer sit for about 20 or 30 minutes wipe off the excess then I'm gonna let it sit overnight the next day I'm gonna do sort of the same process with the cutting board conditioner the two of these together are giving it a nice deep penetration of oil so that the wood is nice and protected from moisture these are food safe oils specifically made for cutting boards and things like this there is a downside that you know they need to be reapplied after a certain amount of time um, you know if somebody's putting this in the dishwasher or washing it uh, with soap you know that that oil is going to get depleted and washed out over time so you're going to want to reapply it at some point all right you guys we are all done with the project it's been drying for a couple of days those conditioners and oils have absorbed so you can see like when i slide my hand across it it's not coming off all slimy on my hands and it is ready to be used so i would say given that this is the first time i have made a charcuterie board 
it's not bad for a first try. If I were going to do a project like this a lot, I would probably invest in the tools to, you know, make it go a little bit smoother, a little bit more efficient. But given that I did this just kind of winging it and after watching a few videos on YouTube, um, you know, I did the best with what I had here and I think it came out pretty good. Uh, we're going to keep this for our kitchen and I've got three more charcuterie boards in here I could uh, customize and give away as gifts. And I think this makes a really great DIY gift for someone. You can customize it, personalize it to the person, and that makes it a really sweet, high value gift. So hope you got some great tips out of this uh, for a, you know an easy DIY project for Pyro. And uh, don't forget to follow me on IG for more Pyro content. And if you're new to wood burning, I have got a free digital pyro pack download. Uh, you can get that in the description below. Thanks for watching, everybody.